Hello guys, this is Christine from Dogs for Life Training and Wellness and today I want to talk about a topic for dog owners to stop their dog from pulling on leash. And so you might have this particular experience. And so you get up in the morning and you know that you are going to be working um, all day and that you need to get your dog out on a walk to get them some exercise before you leave. But before you even leave the house, you're filled with this sense of dread. <laughs> you're already frustrated and you haven't even gone for a walk because you know that once you get out there, your dog is a goofball. They're yanking you, they're pulling you all over, they're peeing on everything, and it can be very, very frustrating. And so let's just say you get up in the morning and you've decided, all right, I need to take my dogs for a walk. Uh, they need to get the exercise. And so irregardless of what you're feeling, you are prepared and you are going to get your dog out there for a walk. And so what you do is you tell your dog, hey, want to go for a walk? Come on, let's go. You want to go for a walk? And so your dog's ears perk up and they kind of get a little excited and they're like, yeah, man, I do want to go for a walk because that's their favorite thing to do. In the meantime, you're trying to put their harness on and while you're putting your harness on, you're struggling to get it buckled because your dog is will, uh, wiggling all over the place and it's a struggle to just, you're spending two minutes just trying to get the harness on. And then after you finally get the harness on, you slap on that leash and it's one of those flexi leads because you know that when you're out on the walk, you want your dog to have some room so that they can run around and get some exercise. And so the next piece that you're gonna go through is you got your, you know, your harness on and your leash, you get to the door, the dog is jumping all over the door, you go to open the door and just as you're opening the door, your dog just barges right through it, yanking you before you could even close the door behind you. And so this is the start of your dog walk. Then once you get on your walk, as I mentioned, now your dog is going from tree to tree. They're looking at the squirrels. Did you see the squirrel? And they're barking. And oh my God, there's George down the street. We've got to say hello to them. And so now your dog is dragging you to meet your neighbor's dog who is like going, man, here they come again. And so you have this sense of embarrassment and or you're feeling exhausted by all of this. Um, and so, you know, you're getting to a point where, you know, you're just you're you're just frustrated with this whole entire thing. And what your dog is feeling by the time you get home is that was great. I love it. I can't wait to go for my next walk. And so maybe you can identify with this because it's a common thing for people. And so one of the things is that's happening here is there's what we call a miscommunication mishap. And a miscommunication mishap is a disconnect. And that disconnect is what your expectation and what your dog is doing is not lining up. Your dog is doing one thing, but you're frustrated, you're pulling your dog, trying to get him back to you, you're calling your dog. And so this is what a, a communication mishap is. It's just, if things are just not meshing, it's not, it's not working out here. And so maybe you don't realize in order to correct a miscommunication mishap is there are three things that need to happen. And so the first thing that needs to happen is you need to have some knowledge and understanding. There's fail, uh, and there is failing to set expectations. Um, there's usually a lack of structure. There's poor communication. So there are some things that have to happen when it comes to knowledge and understanding. There is something that we are doing or not doing that's causing 
your dog to behave the way that they are. And so maybe you are not aware of the mistakes that you're making. And so in this scenario, maybe you're not aware that a harness is not a good tool to use for dogs that pull on leash. Maybe you're not aware that a flexi lead causes your dog to pull and gives your dog permission to yank and pull and go you from uh, go from place to place. So maybe you're not aware that those tools are not the tools that you want to use at the beginning of leash training so that your dog stops pulling you on leash. Maybe you are not aware that getting your dog's energy raised before going on a walk by asking them, do you want to go for a walk? And getting them excited that you're actually creating your dog's energy to escalate before you even leave the house. Maybe you're not aware that before you put on a harness in your dog's leash, you want your dog to exhibit calmness. And you're struggling with that. You're not setting the proper expectation. You're not setting the structure that is needed in order for the dog to patiently wait so that you can go on a walk, so that it is an activity that you and your dog can enjoy while they're getting exercise, you're getting exercise, and you get to be with your best buddy. So knowledge and understanding of things that maybe you are not aware of is the first place to understanding how you correct the behavior. After not the next thing after knowledge and understanding and understanding the mistakes that you're making to create this behavior and to create your dog to pull on leash and to create you to become frustrated and angry with your dog is after you have that knowledge and understanding the next piece that needs to happen is you need to be open and willing to make changes after you have identified the areas that need to be fixed you now need to modify your behavior to begin to create a different habit for your dog so changing our habits is not an easy task it's a very challenging thing because this might be something that you've been doing for a long time and now you're struggling with okay I see and understand what is going on with my dog. Now I need to make changes. And so being open and willing to change your habits to accommodate the ultimate goal, which is to walk your dog without them pulling, that's the second step that needs to happen. The third thing that needs to happen is once we have knowledge and understanding and we're willing to change, is we now need to be committed to action, which means we need to start setting up a training program to begin to change from where you are now to where you want to be, which is a dog to walk pleasantly on leash. So one of those things is when we're taking these actionable steps, we need to kind of take a look and say, here's where my dog is. Here's where I want to do where I want to be. And now you need to break these down into doable training steps. And so you can't just all of a sudden say, you know, one of the questions that I ask people is, you know, if they tell me, you know, my dog is pulling on leash. And then I ask them, well, what do you prefer your dog to do instead? And what their answer is, is usually what they don't want their dog to do. I don't want my dog to pull me on leash, but that doesn't answer the question. What do you want your dog to do instead? Once you understand what you want your dog to do, that's where your training begins. I want my dog to walk next to me. I want my dog to walk next to me, but when we get to an open area, I want them to understand they can have freedom to sniff and to go potty and to do some exploring. But for the most part, I want to be able to call them back to me and have them walk at, at, at my side. 
I don't want my dog to pull me to my neighbor's dog and yank me down the street. I want my dog to walk next to me, but I want them to know that they need to have permission. And so when you have these actionable steps and you understand more clearly as to what do you want your dog to do instead, you can now break these down into little pieces by saying, my dog is pulling me. I don't want my dog to pull me. I want them to walk next to me instead. And so the first thing that you would be doing is begin to teach your dog how to walk next to you. And so maybe you have your dog do a sit and take a few steps out, reward, have your dog sit, take a few steps out, reward, until your dog begins to understand walking next to you. The other thing is you want to get them off of the harness and leash because that gives your dog a permission. The reason the harness is difficult is because it doesn't control your dog. It just pulls your dog from a different area. So when you can control your dog by utilizing a standard collar and or a martingale collar, um, you can begin to control your dog's actions a little bit better. Anyways, so after you have knowledge and understanding, you understand the habits that you've created and how you participated in the dog misbehaving you now have an actionable plan in place and you could begin your training process. Those are the three things that you need to do in order to get your dog to stop pulling on leash. And think about it. Once you get your dog to walk nicely on a leash, that opens up a whole new dynamic that you could be doing with your dog. If your dog walked nicely on a leash, then you would be able to do more things with them. Maybe you could take them to the farmer's market with you. Maybe you could take your dog to run some errands at Home Depot, or maybe you're buying flowers. Maybe you go into a dog-friendly uh, store. Maybe you're gonna go meet your girlfriends and have some coffee. Maybe you're gonna take your dog to a uh, your kid's baseball game. If your dog can walk nicely on a leash, that opens up the dynamic of doing so much more stuff with your dog. And ultimately, our time with our animals is very short. We want to spend enjoyable time with our dogs. And so simply fixing one area, walking your dog nicely on leash, can open that up to a whole new realm, giving your dog a great life balance. And you can enjoy the time that you guys have together without feeling frustrated, without getting anxiety about taking your dog for a leash. It should be enjoyable. So anyways, to walk your dog nicely on leash, you need those three things. You need knowledge and understanding. You need openness and willing to change. And then the third thing that you need is actionable steps and training in your, pro in your program in order to achieve what you want so that you and your best buddy can get out there and do more walks. You guys, thank you for sharing your time with me. Again, this is Christine with Dogs for Life, and you have a beautiful day. Thank you.